Hi friends, this is Seth of the Six LPs here to welcome you back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess where we are taking on this place, which is the Snow Peak Ruins. I never seem to remember the official name for this. So just before we start anything, I'm not uh, before I even start talking, even though I already started talking, but that's not the point. Kill this thing. Just just do it. I know I said I'm not gonna kill all of these things until like the bonus video in which I'm gonna get them all just to make it easier for me to find the clips. And I'm gonna need to, uh, you know, make the bonus video. But, I mean, just killing this thing there is so worth the time it's gonna take me to find out which clip I killed it in. Just, you, you have no idea how much trouble this thing gave me in my practice run of this. No idea. So anyways, now that we've got that, we've got the postal just clarifying. And, yeah, so now we can actually begin this dungeon, which, uh is pretty short actually well I, I find it pretty short it's uh, somewhat enjoyable actually so what do we have here oh is this our yeti buddy he looks like he shrunk who oh sorry i have sickness uh come closer uh huh this doesn't sound like yeti guy what's up you cute little human husband told me you come you want to look at mirror huh my husband found it, but it pretty thing, uh. <laughs> so what, your husband doesn't usually find pretty things? I don't know. But since I get mirror, I get sick, and then bad monsters appear. So many bad things happen since mirror. Ah, sounds like a pretty evil mirror. Just what we're looking for. So we lock bedroom on third floor, where it hang, uh. Wait, I tell you where key is. La 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 la, we got a map of the mansion, so one, two things are special about this map. One, we don't get it from a chest, which is cool. And what else is special? Well, fever make head blurry, but it probably here in room mark with symbol. Yeah, so it also marks where the big key is, or the boss key, or in this case the bedroom key, which we are going to use to get to the uh, mirror, you know. So, yeah, we're going to have to do that. But right now, I can't even get up. Will you bring it to me, uh? Start with door right there. Alright, so uh, even if you wanted to go through another door, um, they're all locked. So, uh, don't know what is up here. She's obviously paranoid that someone's going to come in from over there. So, whatever. We'll just leave that to each their own or whatever. And uh, go through this door. Oh, <gasps> you! Hello, big guy. Long time no see. Wife, look bad, uh? Not healthy since mirror. So I make her soup. Finish from Zora Village are most nutritious. You try, uh? You have some. It gives you energy. So yeah, it doesn't give you that much energy. In fact, it gives you like three hearts. And the reason is, well, it tastes absolutely foul. That fish apparently tastes as bad as it smells. And uh, for that matter, apparently good tasting stuff equal more hearts. So... Uh, yeah, just remember that. Candy gives you lots of hearts. No, that, that, that is definitely how it works. So uh, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So in this room, I guess we're going to head for the big key, which is apparently one room across from us, but we have no way of getting up there. So we're going to have to take a whole huge detour for nothing. So anyways, this is a rather simple matter, really. You just have to uh, push the blocks onto the switch. The blocks will slide until they can't slide no more. So basically all you want to do is push that block here and I believe push the other block just into the switch basically because that block will uh, block off that particular part that is blocking off which is why it's called a block probably. Probably not but uh, you know probably because it's supposed to be a cube but no I'm calling it a block for blocking purposes. And ta-da! It's uh, not abundantly hard to puzzle. Um, uh, you find more puzzles like this along the game and they get harder trust me. But, otherwise, this is not abundantly difficult, and so we will just continue on. Hi guys, how are we doing today? This is, uh... uh what, what day are we? We're, we're Monday, I'm, I'm getting screwed up by the long weekend we have over here. And, uh, yeah, so this is apparently Monday, even though I have no school, so that's pretty cool. And what else is pretty cool is this house. So, yeah, these are the, uh, Snow Peak Ruins. So pretty huge place to be inhabited by yetis, but I guess this must have been some sort of human castle or something, whoever owned this province, I guess. 
but uh, of course it is probably too cold in climate for humans to live in so uh, the yetis took out their well the yetis just took advantage of the fact that this place was abandoned I guess which is cool it's uh, nice to see that these yetis can get by in this cruel cruel world so uh, we got blue rupees it's pretty awesome and uh, basically you had to dig under there I already showed you that but I was too busy like vlogging about how I have no idea what day it is and uh, yeah, but uh, we've got this key now. It's pretty great. It's a small key. You have to dig under there. As you can see, the chest was kind of obvious, so if you didn't really understand what to do, then uh, there's a problem there, because it should have been pretty obvious, in my opinion. But what you're going to want to do is transform into a human, and I believe go in here, which will bring you to the other side of that giant glacier blocking the way in the other room. I don't know why they put a glacier there, considering you can just easily dig under and then go through here, but I, I guess just for either aesthetic effect or for the fact of uh, actually making that wolf puzzle useful. It's not much of a puzzle, you just have to think of, oh, that place obviously requires me to dig there. How will I dig without a shovel? Easy, I have paws. That logic pretty much only works for Link, considering, you know, normal people don't have paws. But, uh, yeah, so we'll take care of these guys here. These are annoying enemies, I must say, because, like, they fly around, and basically to kill them, you have to hit them with your sword while they are floating around, and to make them float around, you have to, uh, hit them. They are always on ice, so they always start, uh, spazzing out. But one thing you can do is, uh, a cheat I found. L target, and just a lunge forward attack. Okay, apparently that cheat doesn't work anymore. I swear, like, at one point in my practice run, I was able to kill them all in one shot with that, but, uh, okay, disregard me. I'm an idiot. So, you know, this ice, like every other bit of ice, I've shown you a lot of ice, and you might wonder, why couldn't you just break the ice? Well, simple thing is, you can't. Like, your bombs are not effective against any of the ice. Your, uh, sword definitely is not if the bombs aren't. So, you really got no way of working around this. So, uh, apparently we can't play with all these, uh, beautiful weapons in here that we would love to just take off the wall and start bashing people with but uh, we can't do that but uh, yeah um, uh, just to avoid saying but many more times I will just make a note of how we are now in the room we wanted to be in because there's a door there and nothing's blocking us from the door and that door leads to the boss key already jeez uh, I knew it was too good to be true. Yeah, it was, that, that was just too easy. So we got these guys. These are, uh, I, I don't know what they are, but uh, they're, they're made of ice. I'll have to think of a creative name for them. Helm Splitter kills them in one shot, and I just got two for one there, so that's pretty great. Uh, yeah, Helm Splitter is the most effective way to beat them, in my opinion. Um, you can also wait for them to throw their javelin, which will make them defenseless, and then you can slash at them with your sword. So now, without further ado, we get our big key, so I guess we're already almost done the dungeon. That was quick. We might even be able to get this in a normal length of video. We got a... Pumpkin. They they insert pumpkins in their keyholes? <laughs> okay, whatever. We apparently got an Orden pumpkin. This pumpkin was grown into your hometown of Orden. So, uh, yeah, apparently a nice bit of home, but this is not what we came here for. What the heck is this? What is this? This isn't right. She got the wrong location. Just my thoughts, Midna. Just my thoughts. Want to go back and try to get her to remember where the key is? Uh, I definitely want to do that, because that was not cool. That was abundantly misleading. So it, it's not abundantly difficult to get back. You just have to go through here, and we're back in this room with the... Uh, Places. Yeah, this room with the places. That's very descriptive. And basically, you can go up there, but there's nothing to do there yet, considering there's a big roadblock in your way. So you want to go over here, just jump down, and basically head back to our uh, female yeti friend, who uh, was very misleading. Let's go, uh, let's go talk to her. It'll be pretty great. We'll get to... Uh, flame her for uh, misleading us, basically. I find that very rude. You find it, huh? What? Pumpkin? But why there? Uh, sorry. Husband in kitchen right now. Take Pumpkin to him. I try to remember. Oh, sure. So, th this is essentially what happens. She, her, her stomach, her yeti stomach, gets the rumblies that only pumpkins can satisfy. So, she sends us out on a wild goose chase under the pretext of looking for a key so that we can give her husband a pumpkin. What flavor? 
Oh? Pumpkin! You have pumpkin, huh? <laughs> and and her husband just basically beats us up to grab our pumpkin. Pumpkin, huh? Pumpkin! Thanks, huh? Oh. You taste it if you want. So yeah, apparently pumpkins taste so great that it overrides the horrible taste of the fish, and this soup will actually give you more health. So you know what? We don't need health right now, but uh, it, it's good. If you need health, you can randomly replenish it there. So uh, basically, she just sent us out there to get a pumpkin for her soup. Congratulations. Now, could you actually tell us where the key is this time? You gave pumpkin, huh? Thank you, huh? I maybe remember. Could be in that room, I think. Okay, so this makes a lot more sense. See, it's like all imposing there to the total north of the place. That looks just like a place where you'd find a big key. So, uh, you know what? We're gonna go there. Check a room marked with map, huh? And she opens that up for you so we can get there. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty great. And uh, this time she won't be as misleading because... Uh, her stomach is satisfied, and look, if you look at this room you uh, on the map, you actually see a kind of happy face looking thing. I'm not sure if that's on purpose. I don't know why it would be on purpose, but uh, yeah, so... Here you have these wolves. These wolves get pretty annoying, I must say, because, I mean, they're fast, and they're annoying, and they're annoying, and I swear, in my practice run, it took me forever to kill these things. In fact, why do I go into uh, senses mode every time I want to use Minda's one-hit kill attack? Like, I, I don't know, it's just something I tend to do. But anyways, yeah, these wolves are annoying. You don't actually have to kill them. In fact, I probably won't kill that last one, but uh, they're just overall annoying. I don't know how many more times I can say annoying, but they are definitely annoying. So you're going to want to go up here. This is actually kind of optional, in fact. You don't actually have to go here, but uh, we're going to go here anyways because uh, it's the kind of optional that you're probably going to want to do. You know, that kind of optional. So, uh, and here we have more of those things. I'm just going to dodge them for now. I um, hope they don't get in my way. Although, things tend to get in my way in this dungeon. I don't know. This dungeon is probably the hardest to me in terms of just how easy it is to die. I've actually had to use my fairy many times in this dungeon because, well, you can lose a lot of health without even noticing. Because, I mean, these things just look all innocent and stuff. But the amount of times they freeze you and turn you into an ice sculpture, it's just overwhelming. See, just like that. And it, that actually does two heart, two, I mean half a heart of damage as, as opposed to a quarter heart of damage. You think it only does a quarter, but really, like every so often while you're frozen, it'll do that. And uh, I screwed up. I needed to go back over here. And the reason for this is uh, I'm going to keep dodging these things because they don't deserve to uh, freeze me. Apparently that one deserved to freeze me. Congratulations, you're better than all the other one of your annoying brethren. So you're going to pick up this. This is a metal ball. Congratulations, you can see. And uh, basically what you want to do with this metal ball, well, you'll see. There was a cannon over there, right? Yes, this does look kind of like a cannonball, I must admit. So uh, why not? Let's just uh, do what we can do with this. Basically, you can read that. It'll tell you how to work the cannon. Well, kind of in fewer words because basically Link is bored, so he only reads like every few words because Link is apparently not an avid reader and we are going to just push this to the side and you know what you can bomb you can shoot that way to actually get to a chest but all it contains is more bombs because basically you need bombs to shoot these cannons but we are not in a shortage of bombs so just put the cannonball in put the bomb in after and the bomb will serve as ignition or gunpowder or whatever and boom it will shoot the cannonball away and break all these ice yes bombs cannot break this ice but uh Apparently, bombs are enough force to move a metal ball that can break the ice. So, you know, another thing that doesn't quite make sense, but we'll not dwell on it. Next, um, you're going to want to shoot down these bats. There's another one in there. Just, oh, okay. Apparently, the other one's right there. I could have sworn it was in the windowsill for some reason. There's probably a third one that's going to surprise me and knock me off. This is an incredibly annoying room just because of... It doesn't look easy to fall off because, I mean, if you're careful, it's not that hard to... Uh, avoid this but with the bats and everything i mean like it tempts you to slash and if you slash this way of course you'll step to the side and you'll like fall off and a bunch of stuff will happen like that and if you step over here you'll slide down so you need to jump over here and these things can freeze you and it's just overall annoying you have no idea how much trouble i tend to have in this room but uh i seem to be getting by just fine now so uh 
Apparently I have the uh, reverse Let's Play curse affecting me at the moment because I'm actually doing pretty good. And uh, here you get what is the Dungeon Compass, I believe. Yes, the compass is ours! We definitely got the compass right here, and a uh, cool thing about the compass in this dungeon, basically... Oh, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned that, but uh, that blue dot on the map right there is uh, Uko. The compass tells you where Uko is in the dungeon. The chests are obviously chests, even though they look like two yellow lines, but we'll not dwell on that. And the red dots are cannonballs. So yes, cannonballs will be pretty useful in this place. So, um, it took me forever to figure out where to go, because uh, like, I haven't played this place in a while, so in my practice run... I was totally just n wondering what the heck I was doing because I thought you had to be in this room for something more important than the compass, but apparently you don't. The compass is really all there is to this place. And, uh, yeah, so uh, just don't dwell on that. You're going to clo oh, close that door, open that door more likely, and you're going to want to uh, get up here, go out here, and you can't see anything, but this is actually very reminiscent of the last room that looked exactly the same, which actually, in fact, is over there, so uh, we've technically been in this room before, even though uh, we could only access the side of the room now, because the rest is all blocked by a wall of ice, but you want to go into your senses and look around here, yes, there is a place you can dig, I'm not sure if these things will... Okay, yes, that thing over there, you want to stay out of the range of its frigid breath, because not only does his breath smell bad, but, uh, you know what, maybe he took a bit too much dentine ice or something, because it freezes the heck out of you. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's the price you pay for not having bad breath, you freeze people into ice sculptures. Which, by the way, still makes no sense, because, uh, I mean, the, these guy, every enemy in here seems to cryogenically freeze you at the touch, so they're all made of liquid nitrogen and stuff, I guess. Anyways, we're just gonna keep digging here. Yes, so you have to look around in your senses to find a spot where you can dig, and dig twice to unearth the chest. It took me forever to figure out where that chest was. I didn't even know there was a chest like this. But it does give you a small key, and we do need a small key for this place, so uh, that'd be a good idea. Very good idea, if I do say so myself. And anyways, you're gonna wanna go in here, unlock the door, and this is an interesting door. It doesn't actually bring you to another room. It's just the same room, but... Uh, locked off by this little door, and the reason for this is because you need the contents of this room, which is a cannonball for the cannon in the other room. So how you're going to do this, you have this mechanism here, you pull down the lever, grab the cannonball, shove it there, and if you go on the other side and pull the lever, it will roll the cannonball down, so you can get it to the other side. You can climb up there, but there's one of those things with horribly frigid breath that's just going to freeze you, so that's not a good idea. You can't go there either because it's blocked off by a block. Man, we're really finding a use for the block's name, because apparently blocks do block us in this dungeon. So uh, they live up to their names, that's pretty cool, and we have more of these things. Annoying little wolves that we uh, have homicidal tendencies towards, apparently, since the uh, last video, I could never get over that. And what else do we have here? Well, oops, I forgot to uh, go get my cannonball that I set up. I was uh, not thinking there for a second, but you're going to take this and... Uh, it's actually easier, since you have to be a human to hold up this cannonball, it's easier to go around this side so you don't get to that part with the, uh, you know, the deep snow where you uh, get stuck and start walking really, really slowly and wasting time. You can shoot it over there, I believe that's only rupees or more bombs or something crazy like that, nothing abundantly useful. What you're going to want to do is uh, turn this here. No, you're going to turn it the other way. Don't bother shooting there. That's just going to shoot the cannonball to the other side of the room, and you are not can't e you can't even get there anyway, so why would you want to do that? So we're going to use one of our bomb bags. This is officially our uh, cannon igniting bomb bag, I guess, because that's what cool people do. They have a bomb bag for everything. And, yeah, so we're just going to run around here. Uh, more wolves. Evil wolves. See, we're losing a lot of hearts in this dungeon, so uh, it can catch up with you, so be sure you have a method of regaining hearts, because you can get damaged a lot in this place. So, oops, the room is fading out. Do we have a mini-boss? No, we have an ominous-looking statue. Uh, one in the same, I guess. So, uh, we have another ominous-looking statue. Two mini-bosses? No, they're just statues. What are you, what are you talking about? So, uh, okay, it locks us in. Um, I knew it! You're the fake statue! Or not. Apparently, that one was. Yeah, so uh, this mini-boss, I believe it's called Dark Hammer. I'm gonna call it Dumbo. 
because it has big ears. It doesn't even have ears, but I apparently think it has big ears. So where that giant ball and chain came from, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it had like a spear like two seconds ago. But regardless, so what you're going to want to do is basically what he's going to come closer towards you. The only way to escape this is to, uh, ow, not do that. You're supposed to grapple above him and make him go right by you. So, uh, you're supposed to do that, but, uh, I suck too bad to do it, apparently. But yeah, you can just grapple up. Get okay, you want to be kind of grappling far from him, but when he throws this thing like that, then it's your chance to hit him from the rear. So, yeah, we get... Ow! See, we have three hearts. This place really catches up on... I don't know how many times I can say it, but... Jeez, this is a guy's gonna hit me, isn't he? This guy's gonna hit me. I'm doing really bad at this. You're supposed to be able to do that. Right, and then when you get to the other side, he's like, Oh, no, you don't. He throws his thing, but we can outmaneuver him because he's a dumb lizard with tons of armor on. And, of course, he, like all other self-respecting lizards, forgot to uh, armor his uh, buttocks so we can hit his buttocks. Like, Nintendo seriously loves to make it so that you can hit enemies' butts. I'm not sure if you noticed that. I definitely have, and... Okay, run away. Ow! It's almost got me dead. Come on, I, I, I do not need to use a fairy in this. I do not need to use a fairy. No, no, not at all. I can do this. Run! Now he throws. Come on, throw. Ha! Ah, just missed me. And lunge at you. Die. So yes, we um uh, totally maimed his tail to the point where, like any other self-respecting lizard, I don't know how that has anything to do with respect, but uh, without his tail, he cannot balance himself on two feet or something, something weird like that. And uh, as a result of this, he just explodes for some reason. Uh, that made sense in my head just about to the point where I said it exploded. So uh, it might seem like, oh, okay, we got through the room. We can go get the big key. But there's something you want to grab in this room, and this is this device. See, you can steal it from him. And we stole the ball and chain. So, just curious, why couldn't Link steal this item just any other time? I mean, because uh, you you see enemies with balls and balls and balls and yeah, you see enemies with balls, all right. Well, you see an, a lot of enemies that possess a ball and chain in other Zelda games. So why is it just now that we get to use it? But anyways, so uh, yeah, you can knock down armor suits and you can actually break the armor suits with a second hit which you can use to get uh, earlier treasure chests in the dungeon. I believe there's an enemy, if you kill that, there's an enemy inside this armor suit and in this one you probably have rupees. I know there's a lot of armor suits that tend to give you rupees, but apparently it doesn't give you rupees. That's a fail. Why, why, why would you make a liar out of me, game? But anyways, we're just gonna get this, and are you kidding me? Or Orden goat cheese? N not only was that protect item of the dungeon, guys. Orden goat cheese. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but uh, yeah, the item of the dungeon was the ball and chain. But she was wrong again. Oh, uh, food again? Yeah, I had a bad feeling about this. She didn't seem very sure of herself. Oh well, let's head back and hope that she has some other brilliant idea. Uh, I'm sure she will. So, uh, basically, we are just being her slave and getting her, like, food. She thinks we're her waiter, and that's very rude of her. I don't know why she would think that, other than the fact that, I don't know, waiters aren't usually dressed in green, so that thing I was about to say does not even make sense. Why can I not make sense sometimes? But anyways, yeah, now we have this thing, and cool thing about ball and chain. Uh, you can now break the ice, so yeah, we're breaking the ice. I, I don't know, I cannot say breaking the ice with a straight face, because, you know, the saying breaking the ice. Anyways, so yeah, you can break the ice without the need of cannonballs. We do not want to get hit by- Okay, we are seriously getting totally destroyed by these things. Anywho, so you're gonna head back here. Uh, basically give us- g g give us- give her a piece of our mind, because we are very pissed off. You were wrong again, buddy. What happened, huh? What? Cheese? Uh, did husband move it? Oh, sure. Blame it on your husband. Yeah. Uh, where in the world did we put it? Sorry, I need time thinking. Uh, take cheese to husband, huh? You do that. I try to remember. Oh, sure. So, uh, she won't even give us the information we want to know until we give her husband the ingredients he needs to make her favorite food. Yeah, but at least cheese has a bit more taste than, uh not cheese, basically. So that will add to the flavor of his soup, I guess. And could you please not push me this time? 
Needs more punch, huh? Then why don't you add fruit punch? Uh, what? Good smell! What you have, huh? Uh, I told you not to do that! Ugh. Stupid, big, fat thing. Mmm, perfect ingredient! Uh. Little more time on fire, it become gourmet soup! Uh. Here, taste, huh? So yeah, apparently this dude is a gourmet chef, so part-time monster, part-time gourmet chef, basically. And you know what? We need hearts, and I don't want to waste our fairy and or our uh, superb chew jelly. Superb chew jelly. Rare chew jelly. So I'm going to get some superb soup. This will raise our hearts quite a bit. I don't know by how much exactly. Um, uh, pro How much was that? Approximately 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 hearts, approximately. Pretty good. That would actually probably fill most people up if they weren't doing a 100% run, but I have tons of heart pieces, so uh, you can't get me with that. I have way too many hearts for my own good. Anywho, so, uh, yeah, let's just uh, talk to her. We made your freaking soup, okay? I think I remember, huh? We put it in nearby room, so no forgetting, huh? Oh, well, thank God. How I forget? Embarrassing, huh? Yeah, very much so. I, I think it's more embarrassing for us, because we had to go find your freaking fails. See? Here. Place mark my map, huh? Okay, so, are, are you sure about this this time? It there. It must be. Uh, you look for me. Uh, for me is the big thing there. I could be looking for freaking warden cereal for all I know. Anyways, so, we can go through here now. Probably gonna want to do that, and uh, pretty interesting thing about this place, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. Right now, you're gonna take out your ball and chain to ex explode this yeah basically well no this is these, this isn't this is the ball and chain not the bombs you're not exploding things you're throwing things at things so forget what i said no explosions required ish it's so much safer right parents buy your kids a freaking ball and chain don't, don't, don't go for all that bomb crap ball and chains are the future i don't know so you can also break these things with ball and chains you can ball and chain is pretty much an overpowered item basically and you'll find that throughout the game you can often find many excuse me okay that thing froze me you can actually l target and use the ball and chain instead of having to aim all the time it's actually a lot faster if you do it that way so that's that and uh basically what you're going on to do here uh, you know what, we'll get into that later. There's something we want to do there. And we have a cannonball. So, a uh, pretty interesting cannonball shooter there, except it doesn't really do anything. You can get cannonballs down there. We will have to in the future, but right now we're not going to do that because we are too lazy. So, uh, why do something we don't have to do yet? And uh, in this room, we have another one of these guys. Now, these guys, shortcut to killing them, ball and chain to the face. They die just like about everything else in this game. But, uh... Otherwise, you can just use the uh, Helm Splitter. Helm Splitter is probably faster and a lot more cool looking to do. But, uh, I, I don't know, what do you think is cooler? Helm Splitter or Ball and Chain Abuse? I personally think Helm Splitter because it takes total skills to do that. Because, I mean, you're basically jumping over their head and, like, slashing at their face. I don't know, that sounds cool to me. And, uh, basically here we get a small key. So yeah, you can use the uh, Ball and Chain to get hit by a bat. That doesn't sound like an abundantly great use for it, but uh, yeah, you can use a ball and chain to move this thing. And moving this thing, which is a chandelier, and it swings on itself, and basically when it swings, you can go like this. You could have also got back without swinging by using this device here. Uh, we are probably, yeah, we're above the room with the, uh, y you know what I'm talking about, that room with the, y y y you know what I mean. The room with the compass, that's what that's what I was looking for. So now we have the small key to go in here, but before you go, just take out your bombs. You can actually do this with a ball and chain, but I think bombs is cooler, you know, because we're basically blowing up the floor right here. So yeah, where the floor is all cracked and stuff, you can blow up the floor and or ball and chain the floor, but I mean, blowing things up is cooler. So uh, then you can open this chest, and what do we get? The piece of heart, and we've collected five, so we get a new heart container. That's just basically awesome. So yeah, we have a new heart container, so it's even less likely we'll be able to heal ourselves up with his uh, gourmet soup. But, eh, it, it served its purpose, I guess, and this heart container healed us up anyways. And now, in here, this place, y you'll actually find that uh, the two pieces of heart are really close together in this dungeon. Basically, first of all, before you do anything else, ball and chain this thing here, and that way, this is the main, uh, not the main room, uh, but... Uh, 
This is the first room in the dungeon, if you didn't notice. This is where you came in. And basically, this is the second floor. You could not get up here because of this gap, except now we can because we unlocked this. So we can uh, shortcut back up here if we fall. All right, so that this is a perfect opportunity to show off the use of this thing here that we freed up. And basically, this guy threw a javelin in our face while we were trying to do something. We were minding our own business, and we got a javelin to the face. This is not the Olympic sports. You cannot throw javelins arbitrarily for distance and hit someone in the face by accident. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen in the Olympic sports, but you know what I mean? It would be cool if it did. Not, not cool, because it would not be cool for the person who received the javelin to the face, but I guess in a comedic manner, it would kind of be sickly cool to other people who like seeing people get javelins to the face. I don't know what I'm talking about. You're probably going to want to kill these bats so that they don't annoy you while you're trying to uh, do precision work with these chandeliers here. So just kill them off with your arrows or whatever the heck you have to kill bats. And this is why I told you to kill earlier the uh, postal. While you're trying to do this, the postal will come up here and hit you. And you really need to have precision timing at this point. Because you need to hit this thing while you're going back so that, uh, you know, you can get close to it. I, I, I don't know. But you have to be doing precision work and all that. And this postal will get in your way while you're trying to uh, swing your... Uh, uh, it's it's so frustrating for me to think about that I don't even want to think about it. But uh, I failed here, so uh, just a second, let me move back. I cannot swing it that way, can I? Well, we're going to have to pretend I didn't fail. Actually, I think if uh, we stay in place, I can probably make that. I could not make that. Anyways, I had some time to think about what I was trying to say, and basically... Postal, bad, it will knock you down while you're trying to hit the chandeliers with the ball and chain. It will be overall annoying. It's basically impossible to get this heart piece if it's there. So just trust me, kill it, just do it. Just do it. And yeah, so now I have trouble getting this, don't I? This piece of heart is giving me... Ugh. Here I am blaming the poor old Postal for how bad I am at getting this piece of heart when in reality, I'm just bad at getting this piece of heart. Just no questions asked. So, uh... Alright, so, uh, there. I finally got it. What I did there, actually, was... Oh my god, I want to get up there before it stops going, and I can't get up there. Finally! So, even though I said that these two pieces of hearts were close clo closest together, yeah. Even though I said these two pieces of hearts were close together, apparently, time-wise, they were pretty far apart, considering it took me forever to do that. Anyway, so what I did basically, I'll give you a play-by-play -play going back here, is I waited for it, I waited for this one to stop a bit, and I hit that one literally twice with the thing, and basically that made it easier to get. I still failed that, so just disregard that graphical representation, but you guys get what I mean. I hit the other thing twice so that it would uh, move farther, and uh, it just so happened actually that it was well-timed, so they both kind of went in together, but uh, yeah, so... I'm sorry I can't give you any more details as to how to get that piece of heart easier, but fr frankly, y I I'm sorry, but it's, it's just tough to get, and you got to time it right. I've never actually had trouble getting that piece of heart. It's weird that suddenly I just became very bad at Zelda in general. Anywho, so, uh, yeah, 38 minutes in, more like 30 minutes plus a dumb piece of heart in. So anyways, I'm just going to kill these guys. You can basically get them all in a cluster like that, and uh, with one or two swings of the ball and chain, destroy them. Uh, so yeah, there's a locked door there. You're going to want to remember that's there, because that actually becomes important, believe it or not. In uh, Okay, here we have a postal. That was really the only reason those block of ice were blocking things. Except it kind of doesn't really make sense, because it went through the block of ice. You guys saw that. The postal just kind of went through the block of ice. So you don't even need to break those blocks of ice to free the postal. You could just get the postal, uh, whatever. Uh, I, don't, I don't, won't try to understand their uh, puzzle developing logic. But uh, yeah, basically, this next part, this is pretty annoying. So uh, this puzzle here, um, uh, we get to push that down so we can get up there quickly. In fact, yeah, I've really got to go back there and get Uko, because I keep forgetting Uko. Even in my practice run, those of you with a good eye would have noticed that I forgot Uko in my practice run. But anyway, so what you're going to want to do here is we have to put the things on this switch as opposed to that one. This is considerably harder to do considering, well, the switch is not on a wall, it's in the middle of the frigging ice pool. So what does this mean? It means a considerably harder puzzle, but luckily, even though you might think so, you do not have to have the things on both switches, only the one in the middle, and that is key to the success in this puzzle. I'll show you guys what I mean. So basically, what you're going to want to do 
is uh, down here. It's already well in place for what you're going to want to do. First, you're going to want to push that there. Over here. And I swear, I got this myself. I didn't even look at a guide for this. So uh, it's actually very logical if you think about it. And if you just take some time to think about it, it's not that hard. And of course, in my practice run, it took me a while to think about it. But uh, now that once you know how it's done, it's pretty simple. So you basically do that. And basically, that puts that there. So now that this one is blocked there, you can push this one all around. And this one is there without having to have something push it uh hold it in place so basically that one being there which is like one space from the switch i believe just push this one around in a full cycle and you can just push it there and bam you got it on the switch so uh it's not actually that difficult i'm i i, I used to think it was horribly difficult and you know what it kind of is but once you think about it from a very logical sense and it helps that i didn't really mess up because uh, really it's just a follow-up from what you did first so you don't want to like move all your stuff out of place from what you originally did but yeah, so uh, basically I unlocked a door up there, and we are going for Uko. We're going to check out Uko, and oh no, I just I just realized we likely will not be able to get Uko without jumping down to our doom, or something of the sort. But anyways, you're going to want to go out here, or uh, what? Yeah, we, we're going to want to go out here. Sorry, I just started thinking about what I said because of where Uko's placement is. Really, it's just overall advantage just to not get Uko in this dungeon, because he's kind of well hidden. So you want to kill this with your ball and chain, I guess. Or, you know what? Just for that, I'm going to helm split you. Or that. See, your jump attack... Okay, you know what? He's up against a ledge. I'm not going to risk the helm splitter. It's just going to make me fall. I'm just going to kill him like that. And these guys, I will take my helm splitting revenge by splitting his helm, and I couldn't get two for one this time, but uh, whatever. So yeah, you can also break their javelin in uh, multiple ways, so that's pretty cool. You're going to want to remember that. And uh, here, interesting thing about this place. Absolutely nothing. But uh, other than that, you can go up here. What you're going to want to do is go out here. I believe you can... No, you can't get back there. So you, you have to go all the way around after you get this, but it's not a big deal. I mean, they're close together. You guys have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just thinking of ways to... Uh, make this as close to a speed run as possible basically so that you guys don't have to suffer through a dungeon video that's too long i don't know this dungeon seems short to me i guess it's not that much shorter than the others it just seems so much shorter because i mean you're basically going back to the same rooms over and over again with a different purpose if you if you didn't notice that that's basically what's going on so uh in here what do we have here we have a small key you might not even remember where there was a locked door you needed this for but uh I do, so I'm going to show you. you got to go back here, and uh, this will lead us back to this room. And this room... Actually, where was I just a second ago? I might want, want, want to check that. And what do I have here? Okay, whatever. I'm, 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 I really just... Because this is 100% running all, so I would feel just horrible leaving Uko stuck in that pot. Except I'm trying to think of where I could have got him that would have not screwed up the video in the sense that I'll have to go back for him. Oh, whatever. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that eventually. You're gonna go... Wait, I'm just going in circles, aren't I? No, you're not gonna want to go in here. I don't know what I was thinking. But, uh, yeah, that, w that I was about to go in circles, so, uh, good thing I caught on to that, because that would have been pretty unentertaining for you guys. It's like, what the heck's he doing? Why is he going in circles? The answer is, I have no idea. I was just not thinking. It's like, way too late at night for me to be thinking and by late at night I mean like 6 p.m. <laughs> it's not even late at all. So you can actually use these as your shield, like a personal shield in fact, so you can just hold that in front of you and it'll block off most people. Most people, most weird ice things more likely. I call them ice rats because you know they look like ice rats. They don't even look like rats remotely at all and in fact they have one eye so they're like cyclops ice rats. Yeah they're definitely cyclops ice rats. Oh and what do we have here? This place. Um, could anyone explain to me the significance of this fireplace? Because I could have sworn, like, back when I was a kid, I did something and something happened with that fireplace and it was, like, important for some reason. But I, for the life of me, I can't remember why, so, uh, I'm being totally massacred by... Oh, jeez. Totally massacred by these, uh, ice spiders. I'm calling them ice spiders for no apparent reason. The reason... The, <laughs> the reason, no apparent reason, but, uh, the reason other than no apparent reason is probably because they have tons of eyeballs and it reminds me of a spider. So they're ice spiders. 
and uh, the offspring of ice spiders are ice rats. So, um, uh, guys, bio biology lesson here, spiders give birth to rats every so often. I don't know. If you squish a spider, more rats will appear in the world. That is just a direct correlation. You cannot deny it. Uh, get away from me. <laughs> I could have actually blocked them, blocked them with my, you know, ball and chain, but I was being dumb, so uh, that didn't work out. So what you're going to need to do, you might think there's cannonballs out there, but there actually isn't. So why is there a cannon mechanism? Because you need to get a cannonball out there. And uh, basically, we got the big key, right? Or did I pass right over the big key? Well, I passed right over the big key. Oh no, you get the big key over there. Yeah, you actually get the big key like a room from the boss. So that, that's kind of weird, but at the same time, it really adds to the effect that this is a small dungeon, even though it's actually a pretty... I don't know, this just overall seems like a small dungeon. I don't know how many more times I can say that. So anyways, uh, yeah, you're going to turn this cannon so it's facing over there. And as you can see, we push these down. So A, we can get back up there, and B, the cannon is shooting towards there. That is how we're, excuse me, going to get a cannonball up there. So uh, if you guys remember, down here there was a room we didn't really explore. Well, we kind of explored it. We've been there before. It's actually the uh, old room. Uh, back here, it's not really well. It's actually pretty old because th these are ruins. But it, y you guys get what I mean. I, like yeah, we've been here before. It's what I'm trying to say. So apparently, if you've been somewhere before, it's an old place. So even if there's like this new city that somehow just got built a day ago, and you've been there before because you were there and you just left and you came back, well, it, it's it's an old place. I'm sorry. I, I don't care how much history it has behind it. It's still an old place. So I'm just gonna go around here. I'm j I'm just making up random commentary to go with this as I'm getting my cannonball. So, I, I, you know what? There's no reason for taking this cannonball anywhere. It's just my buddy, so I'm going to take it with me. And then this cannonball is basically my companion cube, or my companion safety cube, edgeless safety cube. Whatever, you guys will get that reference if you get that reference. If not, well, you do not get that reference. How obvious is that? That's like saying, if you don't have an iPhone, well, you don't have an iPhone. No! Really? Anyway, so just put the cannonball down there. Um, take out your uh, cannon-dedicated bomb bag, because once again, that's what the cool people do. Blow up a bomb in your face. For some reason, Link did not feel it was appropriate to run away from that cannon, but uh, I guess it didn't blow up his face for some reason, even though it should have kind of blown up his face. But uh, we're not going to dwell on that, because it's kind of good that Link still has a face, because, I mean, it, it helps us see and stuff. Anyways, we're going to lift up this thing. Put that down there, and, oops, I forgot you have to be on the other side to pull the lever. Silly me, how forgetful I am in my old age of, like, 16 years old. So, anyways, I'm not actually 16, I'm 15. I, I don't even know how old I am, honestly. Does anyone else have that problem where they, if someone asks, they can't even tell them how old they are? I mean, I have that problem e ever since, like, forever. Ever since the double digits, I've never really known how old I am. It's either, like, an age younger and an age older. I don't even know. So, uh, putting that thing down there, I'm just gonna push this cannon. You gotta turn this cannon around. There's really no other place that you can shoot this cannon with the uh, actual results other than the place you're gonna want to shoot it. So don't bother just shooting this cannon everywhere going, oops, maybe a chest will fall from the sky from the repercussion damage or something weird like that. Actually, if that happens, post a video response, but like, I'm 100% sure that doesn't happen, which is okay, because I'm like 100% sure I won't get a video response anyways. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna explode that thing. Um, uh, yeah, so now you have these things. You exploded that thing, and basically you can climb up that ladder without it breathing in your face and knocking you down. So that's always good. Definitely always good. And now... You know what? We have to jump down there to uh, go up there from that ladder. And you know what? It, I think it's time we go pay Uko a visit. Because, I mean, he's on our compass, and the compass is basically telling you, Quick, go save Uko from his slumber. Slumber? Is Uko sleeping? Does Uko just sleep in pots? Is that, like, his signature race thing? It's like, oh, good night. I'm going to my bed. That's not a bed. That's a pot. Shh. Anyways, so uh, we're going to go, quote-unquote, wake up Uko quoting myself there. I don't even know why I had to put quote unquote to quote myself, but you know, I don't I don't want to commit plagiarism to myself, so I got to quote it. Um uh, yeah, wouldn't want to plagiarize your own material. That that would be horrible. I can I, I can only imagine how horrible that would be. I just came from the room with Uko in it. What what am I? Ugh. 
No wonder I keep missing Uko. I cannot even focus for two seconds without going on a commentary tangent and forgetting what the heck I'm doing. Oh, are you serious? He's back here, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's actually hiding it back here. That's actually quite the bit difficult. And what I don't get is if you uh, slash the sword with the pot, you break Uko out, it's all good. But if you pick up the pot, Uko breaks himself out. So why couldn't you just break himself out from the beginning? N just never mind. Ooh, free at last. Gracious. You're the nice fellow who helped me out the other day. How nice to see you again. Well, now that we've found each other again, let's stick together for a bit, hmm? I'll be right with you. So if you want to warp out, just let me know. You got an Uko. Yes, we now own this Uko for like the remainder of this dungeon. Uh, it actually said we reunited with Uko. It's not quite so uh, possessive. But I, I like to think of it as possessive because who doesn't want a weird chicken with a human head for a pet? I mean, that just does sound like the best pet. I Honestly, it, it, it just is. So we're back in the smiley face room again. I'm going to keep calling it that because I swear that's like a smiley face on the map. So, uh, And we're going to go back where we went. I seriously hope it didn't respawn that giant head of, uh, you know, the... Uh, ice tarantula there that we just exploded but I'm pretty sure it doesn't respawn so it's all good and 15 minutes in I could have sworn this was a shorter dungeon than usual but I get I guess it isn't I I just can't get over that this dungeon just feels so short I don't know if it's just one of the more fun dungeons of the game or if it's just plain short but it's just plain short okay so we're locked in why are we locked in you wonder well because there's a boss key in there that doesn't really make sense there's got to be a ulterior reason to why we're locked in. I don't really know why we're locked in though. But we're actually at the bottom floor of another room. Actually no, this actually is the first time you can go here because I mean we're on floor three I believe right now. Oh no, we're on floor two. But there's still no floor higher than this. I, I don't even know why I'm going on about this but apparently this is like the chapel. So this place used to be a church or at least used to have a church in it. So, um, uh, you can begin all your theories as to what the hell this place was before it became, a uh, well, essentially, Moglin Hut. I don't even know why I said Moglin. Mo not e it's not even Moglin. I was thinking Moogle Hut from Final Fantasy, but I said Moglin. And, th and, of course, by Moogle, I meant Yeti. So, apparently, by Moblin, I meant, by Moglin, I meant... No, what? Okay, so so let, let, let's recap. By Moblin, I meant Moglin. By Moglin, I meant Moogle. And by Moogle, I meant Yeti. So, d just... My references just get weirder and weirder. So, uh... But recap aside, we get to kill all these guys. It's fun time. And, uh... Excuse me. I'm going to chop your head off. It's very rude to interrupt me while I'm doing this. You can actually blow up these, uh... I don't know why you would, because you're gonna want to keep as much uh, distance between, well, as much obstacles between you and their javelins. But you can actually blow up these things with your uh, ball and chain, the uh, benches. I swear, this place looks just like a church. Is that just me, who's never actually been to a church a day in my life, or does this place look like a church? I don't know. So uh, it just looks like a church to me, except it lacks those boards at the front for kneeling and whatever. But I swear, it looks like a church. I swear, I swear it. And apparently they worship the big key or the Ordin cereal, whichever it is. I hope this is the big key because we explode every, exploded, explored every single room. And yes, we got the bedroom key, which is the substitute of the big key in this place. So, looks like she finally remembered this time. Woo, we finally found the key. That sure took a while, but that mirror shard is as good as ours. Definitely. So, uh, we finally found the key. That's basically it. There's nothing else you have to know about that. So, uh, now that we've found the key, it's overall a great time. And, uh, sorry guys, but we took your sacred key that you apparently worship. Why? Uh, okay, so, yeah. And then she just appears out of here. Oh my god, you scared the heck out of me. Uh, but even though that was like a totally belated reaction, so I couldn't be that surprised. But, anyways. Oh, you're safe, huh? I drink husband soup. Feel much better, huh? So I come find you. You found key, huh? Good, good. Bedroom right above us. I take you there, huh? So yeah, she walks insanely slow, but, uh... Yeah, you can either just follow her and speak to her every way along the way because you get bored, but that's not really getting you anywhere. So she's like, bedroom's right ahead, and I believe she just loops this thing she said last. So you can actually run up there, uh... in front of her, and just, uh, beat her there in a sense. You can go and stock up on superb soup if you don't have uh, items for uh, the boss. I mean, uh, bottled uh, 
provisions or whatever. But actually, you don't have to wait for her to come up here. You can just um, uh, open this room here. So one thing I wanted to bring up. She said that she put the key in a nearby room. What is up with that? We had to go halfway across the freaking universe minus everything except this big hut uh, just to get to that key. So uh, what is up with that? That was not close at all. They like making it hard for themselves, apparently. Thank you. You come inside. So yeah, she's gonna escort us to our thing. And apparently there is no boss to this uh, game. And actually, if you look at the map, it's funny because uh, even with the compass, it does not mark a boss in any of the boss rooms. So there really isn't a boss to this place. So uh, pretty relaxing dungeon in the sense that there is no boss, I guess. We just get a free walk towards the uh, key. And we even get escorted to the key. What am I talking about? have had too much of a bad time finding the key. We get escorted to the mirror, so... Yeah, easy dungeon. Here, mirror. You look at it, uh. Ah, oh, so pretty. Pretty. Ah, oh, so pretty. Okay, are you... having a... moment there? Do you get off at looking at yourself in the mirror? Probably, because she seems to be... That is the creepiest thing I've ever freaking seen. Just... I, I was about to make an inappropriate joke, but that, that just overrides any inappropriate joke you can make, just with sheer creepiness. Okay, so, uh... Anyways. Okay, so... You know that thing we were hoping because, you know, the compass lied to us. It told us there would not be a boss, but that was because the boss was hiding among us. So, there are monsters among us, guys. This is a perfect example of that. Twilight Ice Mass Blizzetta. So... This is actually called, uh, her name is actually Yetta, but apparently when she turns evil, she's called Blizzetta. So she has like a, a what, what's it called? Alter ego, thumb problem, whatever. So uh, what, what you have to do here is uh, use your ball and chain and not get hit a bunch of times like me. And it's basically the same concept as the freaking Cyclops ice rats. You want to hit it and it will keep uh, the, go oh my god. Speaking of ice rats, it just shot ice rats at us, and uh, the ice rats all broke into hearts, and you can go farm those hearts if you want. I won't because I'm too uh, speedrun tastic. This is not a speedrun in the least. Uh, no, come back. Oh, <laughs> see, I hit it on the rebound. That's pretty cool about this weapon. Oh, are you dead already? I shall slash your woolly fur coat off, and you will look like a woolless sheep, like in Minecraft. I'm pretty sure that's not how this creepy thing will look, but anyways, second stage. Once you destroy her little uh, ice armor, she's like, okay, well, that, that was totally yesterday. The new thing is to fly, so um, uh, this is actually a often used uh, mechanic in Zelda games, and it's that in one of the bosses, you'll have to look at a reflection in the ground to see what's going on. So basically, the goal of as to this, uh, you, you want to get out of here right away. Uh, we're screwed. Basically, yeah, so uh, you get to see where these things are going to land in the reflection so you can run away from them, though basically you don't really have to see where they are, you just have to know that you have to be in perpetual motion if you don't want to get hit by them. Basically what happens is, you want to wait, okay, so I forgot that there were more, but you want to break them when you get the chance, and uh, basically breaking them will make a uh, opening so that you can get out and avoid that hit, and not only avoid that hit, but hit her with the ball and chain. Apparently I failed, but okay, apparently you can actually hit those in the sky if you're good enough to aim at them, which I apparently am, so I'm very good at this. I'm totally pro. You don't actually need to destroy any other ones, considering like we have uh, enough of a uh, opening to get out of this thing, but uh, uh, apparently I say that, but uh, I don't. Bam! In the face. So yeah, you can uh, damage her little flying saucer, flying ice cube, flying ice cube. Unidentified frozen object. Oh, yeah, so she's flying in her little UFO there. And uh, we're running away. 
And that's basically all there is to it. So uh, just look at the ground to see where these are falling. Once they're done falling, or uh, whatever, break one so that you have, break multiple ones if you can, just so that you have more of a surface to work with. Get out and uh, basically attack. Well, of course I missed because that thing was in the way. So the more you break, the less chances you have of that happening where basically one of these ice blocks are in the way of your uh, thing when you're trying to hit. Because you have to hit pretty quickly when she's down because you don't get much time. She just flies right back up in the air. So uh, yeah, I guess that's a instance where it would be good to uh, destroy these ice blocks. And, uh, yeah, so, I believe this... Excuse me, learn to aim, Link. Jeez, I mean, throwing around giant, possibly extremely heavy objects is just the easiest thing to do. I cannot believe you actually fail at it. That, that, that's not cool, Link. Not cool in the least, so... I didn't even get to break another one there, so... I'm, I'm really bad at breaking these things, but whatever. We'll get out here, and you're not gonna miss this time, Link. Oh my god, how did I manage to miss that? That was... Uh, J just how? Just how do you manage to miss that? I swear, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if I manage to miss again, and no, no, not just miss, but if I manage to miss and hit an arbitrary object again, you have no idea how pissed I'd be. Anyways, this hits her again, and now she's kind of exposed. Not really ex exposed. What, what are you talking about? That, that's someone's wife you're talking about. Uh, I don't know. So, uh... Yeah, but she's kind of vulnerable now. She doesn't have much left of her uh, unidentified frozen object, little UFO. I'm not going to let that joke go. In fact, it's probably going to be the title of the video. Actually, there are no titles to these videos. Ah, boom. Well, at least I got to destroy like two of those from that. So, it uh, wasn't a total waste of a heart. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of forgot that there's no titles in this. But, uh, you know, I could put it as like the uh, description caption, you know, how I do those things. I don't even know what I do, but, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll think of what I'm going to do when I actually do it. Right now, we've got some boss to kill, and I didn't miss this time. Bam. And she's like, no, my precious. And, uh, but it's not a ring this time, it's a mirror, so. Mirror, mirrors are much like weird rings that have to be thrown in the lava to avoid dumb, weird, creepy things with the voice that is totally eerie that go my precious i don't even know if i sound a thing like that dude what, what's his name again how did i forget his name that was like my favorite characters in all of lord of the rings characters apparently it's more than one person well he is having like a personality combat with himself at some point in the movies but that's not the point the point is well we have two mirror shards now i don't know why midna sounds just like me i i, I don't even know two more left seth Two more? Aw, oh, so there's not like three like the other things, there's four now. Aw, oh, sucks to be us. Still, I feel bad about the way we treated that girl. What are you talking about? She was trying to crush us with giant ice balls. I, I mean, really. To think the Mirror of Twilight has the power to change people like that. This world, all worlds, can be cruel. Didn't I mention something about a cruel world earlier in the episode? I'm like, psychic. Totally. Let's hurry and collect the rest of those pieces, Seth. We have to, before more innocent creatures have to endure the suffering this poor girl did. You know what, that's actually really righteous. I, I have more respect for you, Midna, now than I ever have, and that's not saying much considering I used to call you Bugface. But that's not the point. Well, let's go in search of the two that remain. The two that remain. Sounds like... I don't know what that sounds like. Sounds like... No! Oh, so we thought this was over, but actually, lies! There's actually another part to this boss fight. The angry husband who thinks you murdered her wife. I'm just kidding. This is actually not part of the boss fight. It should be, though. I'm just I'm just telling you. That is my two cents on this. This should totally be a third phase to the boss fight where he just goes ballistic. Uh, uh, what wrong with me? Wait, that's that's not even her talk. That, that, forget that. The, the, the voice should be a lot cuter at that point. Very strange. You just dreaming, huh? Yeto, mirror you gave. But I, I don't even know who's talking. I, I'm just gonna have to overdub this. Forget mirror, Yeto. No, look into eyes of Yeto. You no, know, forget the overdub. Let's just pretend that after um, <laughs> after all this, she just had a total vocal cord rearrangement. 
Look in reflection of Yeto's eyes. They're a true beauty. Jeez, you're really full of yourself, dude. Who need mirror? My love. Uh. Okay, I'm um, a uh, romantic moment here. I'm not sure if you can call this romantic, considering these are two giant creatures. Well, I guess... I guess it's, it's about as romantic as seeing two dragonflies biting each other's tails. I'm not sure if you guys actually understand that, but uh, basically I'm making a reference to how uh, dragonflies do the deeds, if you were not aware of that. <laughs> but uh, that, that's not the point. We got a heart container. This is it for this dungeon. We can actually collect all these hearts. They drop a ton of hearts, so uh, you don't have to worry about healing up. And you know what? I think we're done. We're done here. I'll get you out of here. You're sure there's nothing else you need to do, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I think it's time we go. Leave these two lovebirds in peace before they start biting each other's tails. Jeez, I cannot let that go. Well, only one of them has a giant tail, but whatever. Alright, so that, that ends this episode. I am going to stop being a total, total weirdo in my commentary. But uh, you, you guys will see me in later episodes after I'm done saving. Where basically I will have possibly even weirder commentary. Y you never know how, how weird my commentary can get. Anyway, see ya.